Yep. All right. So uh, I'm not going to hand out the sheet to you because I do. If I do, you're going to go and you're going to finish it off so fast because this homework is like the fastest homework ever. Okay. So I want to talk uh, real briefly about kind of what's going on and why we are able to do um, some of this stuff. All right. Um, first off, just sort of a quick reminder. I don't know why we hadn't done anything with this before. This says use a calculator to evaluate each expression. Round your answer to the nearest hundred. Sine 22 degrees, tangent 41 degrees, cosine 70 degrees. Okay? Oh my gosh, really? Like, we can key that in. Um, it's good for us, though, to just take one minute and talk about what the heck is this talking about? And how do they, how do they know what it is? Okay? Um, so, like, for instance, if that had said sine of 30 degrees, we might be able to kind of argue our way through what that means, right? Like what is sine of 30 degrees and how can you come up with an answer? Um, what we've done so far is we've said, well, sine of 30 degrees means if you make a triangle with a 30 degree acute angle, then the sine of 30 is going to be what class? The ratio of the ratio of the sides, which sides? Sine is, sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So the opposite over the hypotenuse. We also, um, if we happen to know the x and y coordinates there, then we could say it's the y coordinate over the, what did we call this one right here? R. R. And if you have something where someone has gone through and actually already um, done that, they said R is one, and we actually know what, what this X and Y coordinate is, then no big deal. I think sine of 30, I think it's uh, root three over two comma one half, right? So in this case, sine of 30 is one half, which is the y value over the r value, which is one, or just good old fashioned one half. That's great, and it really worked out well. We found that from the, the special right triangles and stuff like that. But what about sine of 22 degrees? Did somebody, you know, go out there and create a triangle that was 20, that had 22 degrees there, measured this and measured this? And figured, yeah, they did. And they wrote it down and they put it in books. And that's, uh, and then, uh, then they put those books in table, you know, the table stuff, and then they came up with a, a they noticed some, people noticed some patterns, okay? And they came up with these fancy little slide rule things that you can slide back and forth and be able to get the answer pretty quickly. Then they made calculators and they found out well, we can actually put a formula in here and use a formula and, uh, and have the calculator crank the number out. Um, if you would like to learn that formula, you need to take calculus plus some other higher math, okay? But it's not just something like take 22 and multiply it by five and divide it by seven. It's, it's pretty complicated. Um, but it's pretty neat as well, the way that they, they do that. The point is, that's what sine 22 is. Sine, uh, it's going to be that ratio of those two numbers. And um, what sort of number are we gonna expect from sine of 22? I know we're gonna expect like, is like five a realistic number? Why not? It's not exact? Okay. That's, well five is pretty exact, I mean, five, five point zero 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 zero. All right, no, all right, but um, why is it not going to be five? There's other reasons why it's not gonna be five. This side right here, divided by that side right there. All right, so once again, this is good kind of for us to review, okay. Um, anytime that you have some number up here divided by another number, okay, um, and, you know, and you know some things about those numbers, then you can make some conclusions. For instance, on a right triangle, I know you know that the longest side is which side? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And sine, since it's 
this leg of the hypotenuse, we know that this is going to be the biggest. The biggest is going to be the denominator, and the numerator is going to be some number which is smaller than the biggest. So, all right, not quite the biggest. Moreover, if you think about some number theory stuff, like for all of five seconds, you can realize that any example that you can think of when you have some, some number which is not quite the biggest divided by some number which is the biggest, okay, or the bigger of the two, um, then you will get a number less than one. For instance, five divided by 10 gives you 0.5. Seven divided by nine is going to give you 0.77. Two divided by three is going to give you 0.66. Would you agree with me? Anytime that that number up here is smaller than that number down there, then you're going to have a number that is less than one. So let me ask you again, class, why is five an unrealistic number for sine of 22? Because sine of 22 has to be less than one. That's correct. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. So let's go ahead and with your calculator, put it into green mode. Fire it up, type in sine 22, enter. Probably dig a little more into that, but that's that's kind of a, a neat thing that 
um, that goes on. And you can use the sine and cosine to figure out some other parts of the thing. Uh, and we'll deal with this when we talk about vectors here in a couple weeks. You can actually break that vi down into what's called vix. Wait, somebody's v. Uh, did I say vix or vsi? Anyway, the initial velocity in the x direction and the initial velocity in the y direction break that down and what do you know we're back to triangles again and everything that uh, pretty much this this moment right here is so important because that determines the path that determines whether it goes like this or whether it kind of goes like this or whether it goes like this or whether it goes like that or however the angry bird decides to fly uh, or whatever. Anyway, um, next time you have a work day, you should do something for me. Okay, <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe we'll have a, uh, I don't think help me with it, but we can show how math relates there. Um, and it, it's going to, all of that initial information is going to help you know how high and how far, and there's, and, and there's formulas, there are shortcut formulas um, that we'll probably talk about and we'll, we'll kind of create them because it's, it's fun to do that. But, um, that mathematicians and physicists and teachers have figured out, you know, what is the, what's the range, okay, or the distance, okay, based on all of that stuff like that. And um, one of those formulas is this formula right here. Smartboard relates to control your computer, yes. Well, of course, it's not gonna let me. Is that what you do with trying to use those formulas is this formula right here. It says the horizontal distance V of an object launched at an angle with an initial velocity V0. Okay, so why do they call it V0? Okay, fine. V0. I, I like VI. That's kind of helpful. Like the initial. But depending on your situation, sometimes they'll say V0. Which, fun fact here, you don't say V0. No one says V0. You don't even say V sub zero, which would be pretty cool and a Mortal Kombat reference. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but you instead, you say uh, the British word for zero. Does anyone know the British word for zero? No, that's just Spanish. Spanish. All right, you say V naught. That's what that is. And you have to say it in a British accent. V naught. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, that's V naught, and this is V naught X or uh, V X naught or V Y naught, which sounds kind of like naught. But anyway, V V X naught. V X naught. Um, by the way, fun, uh, all kinds of fun facts here. All right. Uh, you know what they call tic tac toe in England? Tic tac toe. They call it crosses. And not because you've got crosses, right? And you've got not. All right. Anyway, blah 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 blah. Look at this problem. Problem number three. We've got a formula right here. So it says the horizontal distance be somebody has gone through the trouble of telling how far something is going to travel given an initial velocity. Okay. And that formula is this. The total distance that it travels is equal to 
V naught squared times the sine of two theta, where theta is that initial angle right there, all divided by G. What the heck is G? G is the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth. On Earth, uh, near the Earth's surface, which is where we like to hang out, uh, that acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? If you were you know, on a different planet, then it'd be a different number. But if you're on the moon, it's around three meters per second. Is that so it's close to the bottom? <laughs> I could, but I wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, find the horizontal distance of an object when V naught is 80 meters per second. So we can take that number and put it right in there. Theta is 4 pi over 9 radians. Ooh, ooh. When you yeah. see radians, and you're doing sines and cosines, and you need to think, oh, I need to put my calculator in radian mode. Yeah. And then divide it by 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that's, that's that problem. I'll let you work it out in your own communication. You don't need to study that right now. I always knock it over on your controller so I can change the problem. I'll do that in a minute. Um, Let's this is a little uh, early for y'all, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, another application of trigonometry is um, the spring. So you're like, who uses a spring? Anybody know where springs are used? Cars. On a car, on a car wheel. Oh, do, on the, Tim, I saw you there, the door. No, it's actually spring. No, it's there. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, so the spring goes flying. Um, on a car, the, um, the shock absorbers that which prevent you from constantly bouncing around um, are wheels, or sorry, not wheels, are springs, okay? And um, if you were to take some sort of spring, I think of like a slinky and kind of let it go, bounce it up and down, stuff like that, and you were to graph it, that graph would look like this. In fact, actually, over time, it would uh, kind of decrease, something like that, okay? Um, we're going to talk about graphs which go up and down, back and forth like that forever, but also we're going to talk about graphs which go up and down, but um, have a decreasing amount, okay? We'll, we'll talk about that in this course. It's called a damp uh, oscillation. This pure oscillation, just back and forth, just high, low, high, low, at the you know absolute maximum, absolute minimum, every time, forever and ever. Like a frequency, exactly, like a, like a radio signal or a Bluetooth signal or a Wi-Fi signal or a, um, you know, a television signal that's being broadcast or a cell phone signal or uh, light waves or just sound waves trapped in the pressure wave. Okay, like, like, like everything that's waves look like this mathematically. That graph you've never seen before unless you last year, that is a sine wave, okay? So if you graph sine, because I'm not an interested, I don't want to make you graph, I'll make you all look bad. Anyway, if you graph it, it looks like this, okay? So you're like, I don't even know how that works. We'll get there eventually. But you don't have to understand all the details of that in order to start utilizing some of that. And that's what's going on here at number four. It says, a mass on a spring is moving with simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion means up and down, back and forth, oscillating, okay? After a time t, the height of the mass above its rest position is given by a formula. Great, a formula. The height is equal to a cosine wt minus c. Find the height of the mass when a is 8.2. We'll learn what that stands for when we get to the graphing part. W is two pi over five radians per second, so it looks like I'm just gonna plug that number in there. T is six, I'm gonna plug that number in there. And C is four pi over five. Okay, that's great. That, by, by the way, we saw that. This is the phase shift, this is the angular frequency, this is the amplitude shift. So I don't expect you to know those things, but I guess. But it seems to me they've given us A, W, T, and C, you're just gonna type that in. Is your calculator gonna be in radian mode or degree mode? Radian mode. Radian mode. What was the two? Radian mode. So radian mode. 
radiant. Yeah. Um, let's look at number five. This is the maximum height of an object launched with initial velocity v naught and angle theta is given by the following formula. Okay, so this is a different formula. But what is this formula telling us? They want us to find the maximum height. This formula has given us how high it is. Once again, math nerds have helped us so we don't have to do all sorts of crazy calculations and stuff like that, free body diagrams. You'll do those on your own. But anyway, around here, you just can plug in this formula. V naught squared times squared theta all over CT. Okay? And then you're going to say G is 9.8, is sec squared. Is 100 meters per second, theta is 457, and we're good to go on that one. This one down here, the last one I think. Jane is riding a Ferris wheel at a carnival. After a time, T, her height, uh, H above the ground is given by this formula. Find her height when it's this, 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 this. Literally just plugging those numbers in. Y'all think we could do that? Yeah. See if we work together. Knock these out real quickly. Show me that you can do that. We can work through any problems, any sorts of issues or whatever. I think so. We're going to spend the rest of the class um, taking care of that. And if you finish early, you finish early. Today we talked about what class? What are, what are some things that we talked about? I need some, some sentences here. Sine, cosine, and tangent, yes. We did dig into what they mean, okay? Thank you, Dominic. We applied it to physics and other aspects. Okay, yeah. I mean, this is real world. You know, thinking about the, sh the, the shock absorbers. Okay, and uh, I mean, we're not totally applying it. I mean, somebody else came up with this formula, but we're going to be utilizing this formula. Okay, I'm going to give you the sheets of paper. Um, as soon as you finish these problems, or some of them, we'll give you thumbs up and thumbs down, and you can work on. Thanks for watching.